Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with DCS World 2.0. Or, well, 2.1 to be more specific. Once again on the Normandy map in my P51D Mustang. Uh, today's going to be another non combat mission. I'm continuing to familiarize myself with this aircraft, um, just in general, learning to fly. I want to make sure that I do it right. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to be going from Bazinville to Mao Pertus and kind of just enjoying the sights, talking about my DCS and flight training experience so far, and perhaps the future it holds uh, for me and maybe even the channel. But uh, yeah, let's get this bad boy into the air. My startup procedure so far, I think, is pretty good. Uh, I don't know that I currently have any issues starting this thing up. Uh, if you think that you see any problems, you're free to uh, talk about it in the comments below. I usually go left to right with my process here. And um, we'll go ahead and uncage that. Parking brake is usually recommended, but I haven't really had any issues with it because I throttle down immediately upon starting the aircraft. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and prime. Hit that starter. Wait for that cough. And then throttle down. Now, I have seen in various guides people messing with the uh, radiator coolant air control oil settings here. Um, some people say you can just leave it on automatic, but um, some I think turn them off until perhaps after startup or maybe even in the air. I'm not, I'm not certain about that. If you have any information about that, again, feel free in the comments below. I'm going to close that there. And throttle up a little bit. to begin our taxi. Some of this is engine warm-up time as well. Which I believe is quite important. Considering this is a simulator. Not too much lawn mowing today. Okay. Now with that, close the canopy. Once again, if you are curious about my flight gear, my controls, track IR, I'll have links to everything in the description below. Rear view, because why not? Okay. Engaging my tow brakes. I'm going to throttle up slowly here. Get to about 30 in manifold pressure. Pull back on the stick to lock the tail wheel and get set. A little bit of right rudder. Play with that rudder. Then you're going to throttle up. Easing the stick back to center. Landing gear up. Bring down that RPM.
as well as the throttle, keeping it in the green. While we get our takeoff here. Now, obviously there's various limits for the engine, uh, many of which can be found here. I think I need to work on some of that stuff, uh, managing between manifold pressure and RPM. I think in some cases you're supposed to do one before the other, and that changes depending on the situation. Like whether you're supposed to do the RPM first or the throttle first. Uh, that I'm still working on. <laughs> so again, feedback is welcome. Because sometimes when you're live streaming you get different advice. We could go back on the RPM a little bit just to kind of keep it in the green. I have to, I think, rebind. That. Um, and I may even be able to go a little further in terms of manifold pressure, but again, I'm not 100%. Cruise max 2400 and manifold pressure 36. So, I mean, if I straighten out, I could push it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and reset the rudder trim back to default. I've got a button bound for that on my throttle. And then I've got some other binds for various trim settings to straighten out our flight without having to constantly fight with the stick. But right now we've got some pretty stable flight, it seems. Man, this map is gorgeous. Can't get enough of it. We'll get some altitude here. Apparently there's some sound mods you can pick up for this title to get the engine sounding a bit more potent uh, or perhaps realistic. Not that they're that bad or anything, but I've heard some other ones that seem to sound a little closer to what I've heard from the, uh, the air show stuff. Um, I think the only r real big sound criticism I have is when concerning the 50 caliber guns. They're not amazing. Um, the one thing I'll, I've also noticed in version 2.0 uh, from 1.5 is that they changed the uh, like the opacity of the, uh, the gun sight here. Where there's supposed to be like a piece of glass here, and it you can kind of see it. I think maybe more so depending on the lighting situation. So we'll see if we can turn off here and capture it. And you can kind of see a little bit more when we face the water, uh, along with some reflections from these two things here, up here. Uh, supposedly this is intentional, and see so you can see it there, but it's really, really faint compared to 1.5. Um, and in some cases, it's almost hard to tell that there's even cockpit 
glass or that the canopy is there. Whereas in 1.5, I notice that you can sometimes see scratches in the canopy and shadows and things like that. So um, I don't know if it's intentional. I've never flown in a Mustang or really any type of small aircraft. So I'm not going to be too judgmental because I don't know. Uh, but it, it kind of feels like sometimes there's no canopy. Even though when you look at the outside... There's a lot of reflection and glare there. Not sure really what changed, but have to admit it does look a tad strange compared to the old 1.5. Flying is so relaxing. Said it before and I'll probably continue to say it. But yeah, I've been trying to take this seriously. Um, I think I decided to few weeks ago, you know what, let me give a legitimate flight simulator a chance. Let me learn the right way. Let me figure out all the buttons and the dials and some of the gauges and let me nail that startup procedure and taxiing, takeoff, basic flight, trying to keep level, mess with the trim. And then of course landings, which I still kind of struggle with. I'm going to address the trim a little bit. Here. Which are these dials. Which I have bound, you can see, to my throttle. Which I'm not touching the stick right now. That's because we're adjusting the trim. I tried to map everything to where it is in the actual plane. So if it's on the left, I've tried to bind things to my throttle and then if it's on the right I try to bind things to the flight stick if I have enough buttons uh, the gun sight stuff I also have on my throttle for the most part except to turn it on I think That's here. Yeah, there it is. There's the gyro. We have the gyro turned off. We can turn that on. And then, of course, you can go with a fixed sight and gyro, which the gyro I'm, I've got bound to my throttle. I've got like a, a rotary wheel here to adjust that for the wingspan and then I can do that too from the throttle if need be. But usually I think you preset this for whatever you're going to be fighting, like a 109 or 190. Um, and then, of course, you've got fixed. Or you can do just fixed if you want. It's a pretty interesting gun sight. But you see what I mean about barely being able to see the glass? And then there's this weird reflection up here. I don't know. I mean, again, I've never been in a Mustang, so I don't... I've actually never been in any World War II craft, so I don't know what this glass is supposed to look like. I don't know if it's supposed to be that transparent or... But compared to 1.5, I mean, you can't even see it. Um, some people might like that. Hey, if, if that's the way that it is, then that's the way that it is. But I'm, I'm more for, like, mimic the real thing. If you can do that, cool. But anyway, we'll turn this off. Oh, but, well... For 50 cows, eh, the sound's a bit underwhelming. <laughs> anyway, always something that they can work on. 
I'm sure there's mods too. I'd rather not have to install a mod. But... Let's see, where am I at? Well, I guess looking at a map is kind of cheating. You know, I thought, I would, well, I kind of got here faster than I thought I would. Maybe I'll just fly around a little bit more. Since it's kind of early in the video. I was thinking to myself, you know, should I make a video of me just flying around? Will people find that boring? Are people going to want to see combat? Uh, I guess I'll find out. I know that me just flying around is probably kind of boring. Although, a lot of you seem to enjoy it on Twitch. Um, and I appreciate that. That water reflection uh, or with the sun looks real. That looks great. I can't get over that attention to detail. But again, I really want to do this right. I want to learn all the basics of flight. I want to treat it like I'm learning to fly for real. And then when I feel that I'm comfortable and ready, we jump into combat. Although, I've done a few AI dogfights. Um, the AI, I think, kind of cheats because from what I've heard, it doesn't black out. You can black out or red out in this game. But the AI supposedly doesn't. I don't know if that's true, if that's old info, if it's changed. No idea. Um, but I can tell you that the few times that I've fought 109s, um, they seem to be able to do maneuvers that perhaps a human couldn't. I don't... Again, it just seems like it. Um, there's, of course, a lot of work that is being done on the World War II content. Uh, there is a new damage model that is being worked on for uh, the World War II aircraft. I'll have a link in the description below to the forum thread where the developers posted a screenshot of the current damage model and the new one. new one looks insanely detailed, so that's going to be cool. But right now... I don't know that the combat is necessarily the strong point of the World War II stuff in DCS. Uh, again, considering the amount of time that goes into making an aircraft in this type of simulator. I think it's just one of those things where uh, we'll need to wait. And Again, World War II in DCS is newer than than all the jet aspects and you know game development doesn't happen overnight this isn't a game to be compared with uh, you know War Thunder or World of Tanks or something like that where there's hundreds of vehicles this is a title where Potentially a few years is spent on making one aircraft because they're trying to model the real thing. And, you know, speaking of that, I don't know how many of you subscribe to the YouTube channel um, by Kermit Weeks. He runs the uh, Fantasy of Flight Museum or has something to do with that flight museum. I don't know if he runs it, but anyway, he does the Kermit cam where he has a GoPro on his helmet. And he flies these things. And he just started one for the P-51D. I think he's on part two. And it's cool seeing him get in the plane. And I recognize everything. And he does the startup procedure, which... I think some things he did differed. Like, again, he messed with these things, which I didn't. Um, but for the most part, I knew everything that he was doing. He just did it in a different order. I was like, wow, could I actually start up a real Mustang? And... 
I almost think that I could. Um, I would only want to under direct supervision, though, of course. <laughs> I don't want to break a piece of history. You know, you probably want to pay a little bit more attention to the uh, engine temps and whatnot. I think we're good, though, here. I mean, just everything you can see here. Carburetor temp. Coolant. In the green. But, yeah, I mean, hopefully I can graduate into some actual combat. Uh, some of you were wondering if there is combat in DCS. Yes, there is. You can fight AI. You can uh, purchase some additional missions or campaigns. You can play on multiplayer servers. Um, depending on which version of the game you're in, there's 1.5 and 2.0. They're going to be separate. So there may be more people still playing in 1.5. Although if you're doing 1.5, again, you can't access the Normandy or Nevada map. As far as I know, anyway. Um, so if you're looking for some Normandy action, you'll have to use the 2.0 Open Alpha. Which, as I mentioned at the beginning, is up to version 2.1 something as of the Normandy release. Let's go fly over here and take a look at things. Yeah, but you see this here? I don't know. To me, this looks weird. I think it's a reflection of these things going up here. So maybe it's normal, but it just kind of looks... I don't know, like a weird broken texture in some way. I don't know. I'll watch it. I had my <laughs> hand off the stick. We're speeding up here on that dive. Slow down a little bit. By the way, if you hit Shift P, you can actually spawn your pilot, which I didn't know for the first few days of playing this. I knew why they didn't have a pilot, because obviously it covers the instruments. I'm going to reset my track IR here a bit, though, just because once in a while it switches up on me because I'm moving around. Absolutely gorgeous. But it's yeah, it's fun turning on the pilot. Although if you look behind you, no head. <laughs> but that's actually funny enough, it's actually a good thing. I think sometimes a head model can interfere with track IR and VR functionality in some ways, much like what happened with Star Citizen. They broke the track IR support a long time ago, and I think they just re-added it in. It's a bit clunky still. And I think it had something to do with the pilot head model. Um, so actually not having a head model is usually a good thing with a flight simulator if you want to take advantage of track IR and VR. I haven't really researched it fully, so I'm not sure of the exact cause, but uh, hey, you know, it's not a big deal. But it's cool that you have the option to turn your pilot on if you want that added immersion. But you can see how it does cover certain things up. I 
I was thinking playing this would also help me maybe with IL-2. Um, because I had recently gotten back into that as well. IL-2 uh, Battle for Stalingrad. And I went back into that game. Of course, in that it's uh, Germany versus the Soviet Union. So the only plane I somewhat familiarized myself with was BF-109. And I have a 109K4 in this game, which is, I think, more of a beast than a lot of what's in uh, that title, IL-2. I don't know if they have the K4. But the flight mechanics are different. The flight modeling, the handling of the planes, even the taxiing takeoff stuff seemed a little bit more forgiving in IL-2 than here. So... I don't know that learning here necessarily transitions, but I guess when I went back to IL-2, I felt like, well, considering what I learned here, things in IL-2 felt easier. And that's just one man's opinion, but it was kind of nice. Um, I feel like with DCS, I've thrown myself into the deep end. Like, well, learn to swim and just right into the ocean instead of, you know, starting out in the shallows with floaties, you know? Hey, never flown a plane before in your entire life? Never a, uh, played a realistic hardcore flight simulator? Oh, why don't you just try to learn how to fly the P-51 Mustang? Yeah, that's a great plane to start on. <laughs> I did it to myself. Um, mostly because, like I said, DCS uh, World comes with the TF-51, which is the training version, which has... Um, a back seat because I think back there you can see there's like a battery and a radio or something is stored back there normally and with the 50 uh, with the trainer version they've got a back seat there with controls for somebody you want to train and um, so they're almost the same. It doesn't have guns either. So I think technically maybe that makes the, the training version lighter. But anyway, you know, that was my first plane that I had learned because it, it came with DCS World as well as the Frogfoot. But the Frogfoot, it doesn't have a clickable interface. It's not as much of a study sim as the, uh, the Mustang was and is. But yeah, I mean, people were saying, man, you should play you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator or, or X-Plane and, and learn to fly a, a more basic aircraft. I was like, well, yeah, I could do that, but... I mean, I'm already here and I'm sitting in the Mustang and this is pretty cool. And So, uh, yeah, I, I pretty much taught myself the hard way. But I've been enjoying it, there's no doubt about that. Where have I gone? Okay, well... I was going to land there. I could land anywhere, really. Um, I guess I could just pick any of these airfields if we want to go for it. There's one right there. There's another one. Let's try this one. Keyword, try. Already down to 250 miles per hour. Yeah, there's a lot of airfields around here, actually. I think the biggest thing I've had to learn with landing is patience. In a lot of more arcadey games, landing can be done fairly quickly. And I suppose if you're some sort of professional, maybe you can do it a lot faster than I do. But, you know, I mean, you're landing an aircraft. If you're trying to do it realistically, you want to play it safe. This is potentially one of the most dangerous things you can do, right?
slow down quite a bit here. I should want to pick up a little bit. So that I can try to get a decent approach. See how my wind's doing. Bring down that throttle a bit. Might be coming in a bit fast here. Landing gear. It's going down. Give it some more flaps. That's just the engine. And flaring. A little bouncy bounce. Back on that throttle, toe brakes, toe brakes, left and right. Try to keep her center. Not too bad. I've had worse. Much, much worse. <laughs> I haven't exploded. <laughs> Always a good thing. I will take it. But to think, ladies and gentlemen, that I've come this far, for me, it's a, it's a grand achievement. For you, it's like, oh, big deal. You landed a plane in a game. To me, it's like, no, I landed a P-51D Mustang in one of the world's most difficult flight simulators and um, it's just probably going to go down as one of my greatest achievements in, in gaming history I know that maybe sounds a bit extreme to you but I can't help but feel like it's a great achievement Like I said in my first impressions video, my first contact, a smile overtook my face the first time I started the engine on this thing. It felt like such a grand accomplishment. And then when you take off for the first time, and then you have some level flight then you try to figure out how to land, and while well, you're <laughs> flipping the plane, breaking the landing gear, exploding, yeah, it's uh, that takes a few more days. But once you eventually nail those landings, even though that one wasn't necessarily perfect, there was a, a little bump there, I think. It wasn't too bad. We didn't break anything. But yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying this. Um, I want more of this. I want to eventually be able to do combat. Uh, of course, I think we'll wait and see what happens with the new damage model. And, uh, you know, we do have to consider the fact that this, again, isn't like a traditional game. You know, this is a simulator that adds in new aircraft over the course of several years. And so right now there's the P-51D. There's... Spitfire, there's the 109 K4, there's the 190 D13, I think. I forget which one it is. Um, P47 is in the works. I don't know if there's anything else. There might be. And, uh, 
you know, I can't wait for a day where we can perhaps see some grand World War II uh, multiplayer air combat that's perhaps uh, a bit more stable and historically accurate in terms of damage modeling and flight mechanics. Because I'll tell you what, flying in this game is so freaking satisfying. If they can nail the combat, then I will be in love. And this is coming from a guy who's generally more comfortable on the ground than in the air. Um, it's just a grand experience. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, really hope that you've enjoyed this little flight of mine in DCS World. For all the links you need to succeed, don't forget to check out the description. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.